Uh, shalom, shalom. My name is Cyrus Sabbat. Welcome to my 3D printing wearable workshop. Um, I came to FSU in spring of 2022, and on my very first day, I walked into the Innovation Hub. I met Eric, who works over there. He's away right now. And um, I said, can I build a Mandalorian armor? He did not shoo me away. He gave me a printer in the Fab Lab. He said, okay, this is your printer for the entire semester. He showed me how to do it, and I learned a lot. I failed a lot, too, and I'm hoping to share that with you guys. So here, I have like a few slides, well, more than a few slides. And then after that, like I'll be here if you guys want help making your own stuff. I'm here to help like figure out how to do that because it is not a very clear-cut process as I've learned. There's no one size fits all, unfortunately. So one, starting the journey, how the heck do I do it? Plan, figure out what you're trying to do, visualize what you're trying to make, choose what, you're wa what you want to print. Because of course, like not everything is needed to be printed out. And recognize that nothing is going to go to plan. You're going to lose any time frame you had. And things will change, things will adapt. But sometimes they can get a lot better. Um, when I started my Mandalorian armor in January, I thought, oh, maybe I could have it done in February for my birthday. It was not ready before, by February. I'm like, oh, maybe for uh, Jewish Halloween in March. It was not ready by then either. And then I was finally ready by April and even then like there was a lot I would have done differently, but it was really fun to do and then decisions Oh wow Sorry I'm um, sorry, decisions. 3D printing route. Consider you'll either have to find a file, design it, cut it up into multiple pieces, print it out, glue it, and post-process it. And it takes a lot of time. But consider, there's also other alternatives and like literally anything else, because not every item of a costume should be 3D printed. It's a lot of wasted material. Like if you're doing Batman, you're not gonna 3D print a cape. That's just ridiculous. I've seen people try to do that. It doesn't go well. Oh, sorry, I love this format. Uh, consider your basic comforts, the dexterity, how important is finger movement? So for my Hellboy fist I'm working on right now, there's not gonna be any finger movement when it's finished because it is just a giant fist. And I was thinking about making it into a puppet, but it just doesn't work for that design. Uh, sharp bits, um, some people won't, or some places won't let you in if there's any sharp parts because it can be considered a weapon. And also it will just hurt a lot if you like wear it in the wrong way. Bulky armor, you'll be able to sit down in some armors you'll lose a lot of movement. And how comfortable is it to wear for long periods? Uh, the Mandalorian armor is very pretty miserable to wear, not gonna lie, but you could hide fans in them. You could do a lot of cool stuff to it to make it a bit more comfortable, but it's never gonna be like, oh, I'll wear it all the time. Background in history. Uh, he who lives by a 3D printer dies by a 3D printer. This is something that uh, means a lot to me because I find 3D printed scraps everywhere in my life. Uh, when I was doing helmets, I'd find like plastic scraps in my pillowcase. Uh, it's not good. I've shortened my lifespan a lot. I'm like 90% microplastics now. So just keep that in mind if you're going to start this journey. Um, how 3D printing revolutionized wearables. Um, so 3D printing really like changed everything when it came to wearables and, th and so did 3D scanning and 3D modeling. So life casting in the past was the process of just like literally molding someone. And like for like all the major costumes for movies, for movie monsters or superhero movies, they would put a mold over someone and they would try to like literally get like a whole like body of someone and then they would sculpt a mask off of that. And it, it for a while, like or for a long time, that is just the standard there was nothing else you could do but there was a loss of detail very labor intensive and like imagine you're trying to breathe under that it's not fun it's not pleasant I looked into doing life casting it was ultimately not where I decided to go to but then 3d scanning rigs uh, 3d scanning is much much better I have a phone app that does it polycam would recommend you can get fantastic scans and with a rig like that it changes everything I know Marvel movies do a lot of that now for their like uh, for actors and stuff like that and it, like, there's no detail loss between models, so you could really just have all the detail you want if you're doing wearables for sizing or if you're just putting into like a 3D model into something. Uh, purely CGI costumes, I want to talk about that also for a little bit. Um, the Hal Jordan costume and Green Lantern, all CGI. Uh, you know, there was not a single real clone trooper costume for the entire prequels, which I thought was insane. It's all CGI. And then like Hulk up there, obviously that had to be CGI and it looks kind of hilarious. But um, yeah, the 3D printing, it could allow you to make some things that like aren't possible in real life or without mass producing it. Uh, now you're ready to start. 
Um, make some mood boards. Figure out the vibe you want. I think that's very important. If you go into something without a clear direction, it's gonna be very aimless, and I've definitely started a lot of projects like that. Like I just started printing before I considered what I want it to look like, and as a result, it was very disjointed. I spent a lot of time painting. I definitely inhaled a lot of spray paint. Um, Definitely shaved a few a few years off my lifespan. Uh, and decide which parts you want to fabricate, of course, and consider what you're making it for. If you're making it for a film, consider that like some parts don't need to be seen. You could have multiple costumes uh, for different parts of it. And then if you're making it for a cosplay, consider like okay, I'm gonna be wearing this for long periods of time, but I'm not gonna wear it every day. I'm gonna wear it like one day a year. So like maybe you're, you're fine being miserable. You'll be walking around all day. You don't care if you can't sit down. You just want some pictures. So post-processing, this is a very fun thing. 3D, once you 3D print the file, that's the Wolverine helmet up there. Um, you chop it up, you glue it together, and then you put wood filler or some kind of filler on it to hide the seams and to hide the layer lines. This is just an example with the Daredevil helmets, and that's the Black Panther one I did there. Um, and yeah, you see the process slowly, like the layer lines are disappearing, and slowly the seams are disappearing. And overall, it was a fun project to do. These are like, I don't think I ever used any of these for like a film or anything. This was just like, oh, I wanted to have a helmet. But they're really fun to do. The Black Panther's eyes actually would light up, and I donated that one to the BSU which we have it on the TVs with like the picture of that. Um, and the steps, find the file you want, get the measurements, and scale the print accordingly. There's a really cool program called Armor Forge where you could upload all of your measurements in, and as a result, like uh, you have like a model of yourself, and what's it called, you could put the 3D models on there, and like you could see what it'll look like, and it's very helpful while, while like designing a costume. Uh, and then you cut the print to fit the printer bed, accounting for efficient use of supports. For example, like if you're printing like a helmet like this, if you printed it like, like like this, it'll fill the bottom with supports, and that's very inefficient. But if you put it upside down, that would like immediately cut a lot of print time in half because there's no like need for the supports inside the helmet. Or if you cut stuff in half, you'll get rid of supports. It's it's really it's really annoying for a guy who didn't do too well in geometry. There definitely was a learning curve. But then you like uh, you sand it, fill it with wood filler, sand, cry, filler primer. Filler primer is like very thick spray paint that's very good for hiding the layer lines and then maybe it'll finally be ready to paint um, I painted my Mandalorian helmet maybe like 50 times. I was just like so excited to do it. And I want to see what it looked like. And then finally, you could make it wearable. And I know I'm throwing a lot of information at you guys. And again, there'll be like more like you guys ask questions later. But um, yeah, connectors. Uh, Velcro, it's tried and true. It's cheap and it works. And it's very easy to take on and off. Uh, magnets. Magnets are probably the greatest thing in the whole world. I don't know how I waited so long to discover them. So for this Daredevil helmet also, um, I don't. I think we're missing the piece now. But um, for the Spider-Man 2099. Um, there's a back plate on it, and like obviously it's like a solid piece in the movie, but like it's this magnets and it locks onto the head. I think we dropped it, so it's not perfect right now. But um, yeah, the, the magnets help it lock onto the head much much better, and like it's as a result, it's like very secure, and you could do some really fantastic things with, with magnets. Oh. Sorry. And then finally, if you make it form fitting, there's a chance it might not even fall off at all. You won't even need like any uh, magnets at all. Like when I when I did Batman, it was molded to my face and I didn't really need anything to like help lock it into place. Attaching the connectors. Consider the placement of where you want the connectors. Uh, it doesn't inconvenience you. Uh, nature calls. Consider you're gonna want to take something off very quickly and like it might be annoying if there's a million connectors. Durability, consider that the connectors might break and don't sacrifice strength and reliability for looks. Um, I know I have and did not go well. And finally, just test it out. Wear it around your house, wear it like, oh, for a few hours, see what it's like, run into any issues at home in a controlled environment before you like go to your Comic-Con or like, wearing a full costume or something. And then consider why are you doing this? Like, if you're wearing an everyday piece of clothing, um, or if you're making it for a film, you have multiple things for different scenes, even though I think I mentioned that earlier. I love this example because Robocop, I think, is one of the greatest film costumes of all time. And Peter Weller is not wearing any pants in this shot because the costume was too bulky. And I think that's amazing because you can't even tell that. It's just movie magic. And like, films are not designed to have real wearable costumes. I, there was someone here, he was making a costume from How to Train Your Dragons. And he was modeling like all the buckles. And he realized the buckles don't make sense because they were never meant to actually be made into reality. And they're just like useless buckles. And he's like, do I actually like 3D print them just for design? 
design because they don't actually hold anything up. So consider that, like the movies, you're not gonna get a one-to-one. Uh, and then additional, consider the clothes you'll be wearing with it, whatever it is you make, whether it's undershirt or, um, or I don't know, whatever, but the 3D printed material should never touch your skin directly. It's not very good for you. Um, for my Mandalorian armor, I got like a thermal shirt and some people wear like flight suits. They're pretty cheap or like jumpsuits. Airflow is important. Disney hides their fans in like their big mascot suits. And except that PLA is very fragile. Even if you make the coolest costume ever, you are gonna end up breaking it and you're gonna get very sad about it. So so just accept that like you're gonna have to glue it a lot. There are other materials, a PLA is the easiest. And take pictures, document your progress, see what, where you messed up, see what you could do better next time. And it's also just good to post online. And then this part is the best part. Lessons from my mistakes. I have three examples here. Attempt one, my Mandalorian armor. Again, I came into the Innovation Hub my first day at FSU, I wanted to make a Mandalorian armor. I knew nothing about 3D printing. They showed me everything. It was my very second print. Um, I think I made like a tiny like spaceship for my first print. And I started printing everything out. The first issue I ran into was the helmet was not sized correctly. So I had to throw out the first helmet. That was mistake number one. Then mistake number two was, um, the armor, I really didn't consider how to adhere it to my body, and that was like an, a huge issue. I, there were tiny holes in it I had to like put in, and like I had to just like tie it around myself. And it wasn't the best, but it ended up looking pretty good. And then these gauntlets over here, I've seen people like cut them in half so you could like like a clamshell design so they can come on and off easier. I had to like slide my hand through and it was not comfortable and it really hurt. And overall, there were a lot of things I would have done differently, and it made me excited for the next project, which was. Oh, this is the only video I have of me wearing the suit, but... <laughs> I apologize, uh, there's no sound for some reason, but... Um... <laughs> Okay, yeah, you got the idea. Basically, I, I, I want to make a Batman suit. I had a few ideas for it. The helmet was molded to my head, and what's it called? I had an idea. I was like, oh, I want to do a few options. So I put magnets on the back of this logo so I could swap out the logos whenever I want. And it was very, very miserable to wear and make because... Oh, uh, sorry, <laughs> that's another good picture. Um, ultimately, like it took 30 minutes to put the costume on and off because I had to consider like I wore an un like a morph suit underneath it and then I put the 3D printed parts and then I put on the thermal shirt and pants and the gloves. <laughs> I don't know why I chose this. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I just wanted to show you. So, like, it was a fun suit to, to wear, but like, it was very uncomfortable. You couldn't wear it for long periods of time. The chest plate was so big, so it limited my movement. I couldn't like close my hands like that. And like, obviously, capes are very annoying. I didn't realize that. The jaw was like, it was form fitting. I couldn't like move my mouth enough. So like, I had to just get the Dremel and I cut the jaw in half over there, so I could put it on and off easier, and so that I could talk. And it was it, like, it was very fun to have but like I never want to wear it again so just consider that uh, attempt three this was a very different attempt and I tried to make something professional this time so I was doing a daredevil fan film last year uh, that's me in the helmet I made it like one form fitting it's that helmet over there and I was like okay I have to try something different I have to plan it out very carefully and um, I got my inspirations just a few of them and then making the suit I assembled a mood board of things I wanted in the suit I 3d printed a cowl I thought was cool I painted that and then I worked with an artist a good friend Brandon Gutierrez and what's it called uh, we made the concept art and then we were really happy with that and then we want to make it wearable so we had our actor Trey Becker amazing man he's an FNL would recommend checking that out he came in for a few fittings uh, we sized it correctly that cowl did not fit I made a lot of cowls and you could tell you I think I made like five or six just because of 3d printing issues uh, and then finally it fit really perfectly I was really happy with that but like it ran out of filament because it printed upside down 
down so it doesn't go far enough down the nose. But overall, like we got the sizing correctly and I put that man through hell. And then the final prog is just behind the scenes shot. Um, the 3D printed component is a tiny part of the suit, but arguably it's probably the best looking. And what's it called? Like consider that like 3D printing isn't a one size fits all problem um, solver. And as a result, like there are some things you shouldn't even 3D print, but the helmet looks fantastic. The eyes light up and it generally came out very well for the purposes we had. It was very uncomfortable for him for long periods of time, but I don't think he ever wants to see the suit again. He wore it in the hot garage for like six hours at a time. And then this is a little like motion poster we had just to like see what looks like a motion. And keep in mind, movies lie to you. There's a lot of color grading. It's very dark in that. It's a bit brighter on my screen. But like movies lie to you. It's never gonna be one to one as I've said. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff is very fake in film. And in conclusion, 3D printing is a magical problem solver, but if it's used right, it's a powerful tool to make some incredible things. Leaning on any one type of technology is never a good idea because I think you limit yourself. Um, and if you can, but if you combine it with other things, you could really make some amazing, like amazing projects. So yeah, I think that's really it for my presentation. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, uh, if you need help with your own projects, I'll be here to answer any questions. If you guys want to see the helmets, some of them are better quality than others, I'll be honest. Um, and just to show off like what specifically some of these are, uh, that's the Hellboy Right Hand of Doom. Um, that's a Loki crown I'm making for Halloween, it's not finished yet. My friend is making a He-Man Masters of the Universe theater show in the spring. And this is going to be an articulating mask for Skeletor. So someone's gonna be wearing this, the mouth movement's gonna be cool. And then, yeah, I have some other stuff here. I have a Thor helmet that's not finished yet. My Captain America helmet that someone dropped while we were setting up. I'm not gonna blame anyone, but. <laughs> Question, you mentioned something about supports. What are those? Okay, so supports, like your 3D print can't print on nothing, it can't print on the air. So supports are just like temporary structures that you can just rip off. So like, um, it'll be like, it'll be strong and it doesn't fail. So like if you're printing like a dome or something, it'll like fill the inside of the dome and then you can just take it out when it's done. But yeah, if you have any questions,